Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. If you're in the chat, you can ask questions or even if you just say hi and Gary will try and answer as many as he can. If not, he will shout out and I will try and help you. So today I want to use velour pastel paper and the wonderful hand rolled unison pastels. Um, I don't often use the velour paper, so this is something I haven't used for a while. And I have meant to do a demonstration using the unison pastels, just never got round to it. So I, I made a concerted effort to drag these from the back of the cupboard and use them because they are beautiful pastels. They're made using the finest pigments and it's mainly pigment and a little bit of binder. You can see the lovely shape of them. They're all slightly different. This is because they're hand rolled. So a dollop of pigment, a little bit of binder and water in a ball onto the thing and rolled out like that. And that's how these pastels are made. And they're, they're wonderfully soft. So velour paper. Now this is an interesting pastel surface. Um, pastel surfaces have moved on from traditional papers. Um, the grip is something that um, pastelists are looking for because it means there's not a lot of dust. But when it comes to using grip, sometimes it means that you can't blend and soften as much as possible. And this surface, I'm not sure I like the feel overly because it's a bit like velvet, but it's a fabric surface um, glued to a paper surface um, and it's really interesting how it grips the pastel so it creates a really soft line let's put a bit of orange on look at that it just creates that fuzzy softness which is really nice for backgrounds and i'll show you how you can get quite clean lines but look how intense the colour goes on straight away. What it doesn't do is it doesn't blend as easy. I do know you can push it into the surface in order to get those layers to grip. And when you put additional layers on, look at that, look how beautiful you can go over. Try the lighter one. It will start to blend. So once you've got your layers on, you can soften and blend that way. Sometimes pastel pencils don't always work on the surface. They get a bit scratchy. You can see there with this one. They do tend to start to work on top of a pastel layer, but you do need to check which pastel pencils work. So that one doesn't, these are a bit too hard. It may work for what you're looking for. Yeah. And that's so these are all the Derwent pastels. Those two colours are a bit hard. The black's working really nicely. And I do use a pastel pencil for initial drawings. So this is a a Faber one, I think. Yes. And it just gives me a nice light outline. If I don't push into the surface, because it's very easy. I don't know if you can see there, to dent the surface and scratch the surface. Um, so you can see, let's pop the pastel over. It, they do show up um, when you put the pastel over it. Now this is a scrubby piece of um, off cut. You can see it's got a bit dented at the side. I tend to cut um, strips off when you've done a painting and then you've got little strips to practice with and you're not wasting paper. You can see this was one I cut off, a final piece. Velour paper, it, it, it grips really well. You can see how little is actually coming off on my fingers, on, on, on my hands. What it doesn't do, it doesn't take water very well, which is why I've just, Major, I've covered 
Now, you, people do use water with pastels, so in a wash underneath or alcohol. This paper um, doesn't really take water. Now, maybe you don't want to use water, but if you're using a fixative, you need to be careful. It doesn't need a fixative, and to be honest, I don't use fixatives because I don't like the way it alters the surface. But sometimes people use a fixative in layers and then finish the final painting without a fixative. You do have to be careful because you're adding a wet medium to this surface. And you can see there how easy the surface is to disturb once it's wet. Let it dry and it should be okay. But it is also easy to blemish. So I've had an artist say even if they try and blow the dust off and any spittle that goes on it, it will stay in the paper. So just practice, try, make sure you do it and you're happy with the results before you try it on a final piece. Um, what else? You, let's try and see how well it takes to come off. So it is a delicate surf. You can see how easy it is to dent. So you do have to be careful. So lifting off, it's not advisable to use an eraser to rub the surface because you're going to uh, interfere with the flock. But you can lift, and I have to do this quite often because I'm quite a messy pastelist and get fingerprints all over. So if you just gently lift, let's try a bit, I haven't pushed into the surface, let's try there. I've kind of rubbed some of this into the surface, which is why it's not lifting as easy. But it is lifting. You see there, I can lift off and alter. I love a needable eraser because it's all self-cleaning. You just keep pulling and then you've got a clean eraser. So there's some of the um, velour practices. But it's, you can feel the wetness going through um, onto the surface. You can see it bubbling there. So do be considered if you're spraying because you're adding a wet medium to this surface. But let's go have a play with a painting of a scarlet macaw. Now, I'm going to use plenty of reds. Uh, and this is why I've got these little strips, because I just want to use the right red. That's going to be the darkest one. Because until I've tried it on this colour surface, I'm not sure which one is going to work. So this is, I think, called, this is actually orange, but on this, I think it works for that red. So let me just start here. Look how quickly it just grabs the colour. It's a great thing about doing birds with feathers. You just need to dab it on and it creates that feather-like appearance on its own. There's plenty of ways I can layer up, so just, I like to put colour down. And I don't know if you can see, but I can see little clouds of dust coming off. Because these are super soft pastels. Going around the outside. I'm applying this very lightly. And I know if I've got areas I don't like, I can go back over. Great thing about pastel is the ability to layer.
just looking at the direction of the feather so they kind of go up and over and then over the head this way use some of this lighter color I am really very lightly putting this on what color is this that's a 14 so that's additional 14 a little lighter. Now the colours from the photograph are going to be a little bit different because it's just the way it's caught the light. So I don't need to be using the side there to put colour on. Anita? Yes? I have a question for you. Okay. About the parrot, is it the one from Woodside? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can notice he's, he's there as you go in, isn't he? He's, he's right there as you go in. Um, poppy, he, is it called Poppy? I'm not sure what he, he, he or she was called. It, and it, it talks as well. It, it does. It, it greets you as you go in. Um, and Woodside is not far from either of us, is it? No. It's just down the road. Very small, little um, wildlife park but they have wolves which is really um, interesting to see right so now on to a bit of yellow to add a bit of lighter areas and the meerkats you can feed can't you yes get some real worms and feed the meerkats and you go into the inside heated area oh, and the sloth kind of yeah. Yeah. and the sloth is just crawling around in in the ceiling uh, and the bats the bat I don't like the bat area because <laughs> it's just black um enclosed area so it's a bit don't mind bats I just don't like a dark enclosed area but yes it is it's a, it's a lovely place to visit and not far uh, google tells me it is popping Poppy. Poppy, hello Paris. Poppy. But yes, it's a nice way to be, um, as soon as you walk in, you visit, you, she says hello to you. And she's right outside, literally as you come in, so she greets everyone and sees what's going on. So just adding some light. So what I'm also going to do is pick up the differences in the feathers that I'm seeing. So on the head, they're much lighter. Just use the edge to pick up the much more spiky feather. And as it goes round into the head, it gets a much bigger, slightly different shape. But look at that light already, isn't that? coming through so there's about three four layers of color it's quite light over here and I quite like that so. I like these different feathers here and as they come down here Isn't it really nice when you've got a medium like this that you can just create a shape? That's perfect. So this rounded feather you can just do that without much effort at all. Okay. Right, let's go back. Let me start with some darker. I know what I need to do as well. I just, I need to bring this down into the face. So feathers go around the face and this is skin with a few red feathers on it but I just need to darken because it goes round following that 
roundness and shape and round the eye because the eye does go back a little bit you just need to add some dark around here and I've noticed that the feathers go back in that kind of shape away from the face just here and they are a little lighter now if this is a bit too dark which it does seem a little bit I can go back over it what it's doing is it's helping me identify the darker areas so under here under the beak and the beak a bit darker there but go back in with the red I like this. Difficulty with when you put the darks on it, you can go too dark. What red have I got? So using the little swatch I have, I can now see which red. Beautiful colours using the side because that will really quickly put on. And you notice the difference, it's not as harsh if I gently just drag the pastel over the surface so it can be used for a background. Right, let's fill in. I'm going to just remind myself is I want to just pick up a little bit of the blue and green because um, the Scarlet Macaw has um, beautiful blues and greens and yellows on their wings and you're just catching the top of the wing there. Keep working on this. I don't like that yellow as much. I think it's a bit bright, but I can take that down. So let me take that back a little bit. Use that red. Gently dab it on. It's better. Not quite as solid because these feathers are quite um, delicate. I just want to see how fine I can go because I'm not going to use a pastel pencil. I could use a pastel pencil for very fine detail, but I'm going to see how much I can get from just using the unison pastels. Because sometimes I find I get a little bit too obsessed if I've got a really fine detailed pencil, I'll then get really obsessed with detail and I don't that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is a little bit of texture. Okay, I'll leave that for now because I can always go back into it. So, the beak. Now, I don't want to put white down straight away. 
we put the black outline, then I can see. Now this is going to be tough, is getting the point of the beak. It comes up there. Just grips the pastel instantly. We get a really strong lay down of colour. Um, just dot that there. Helps me decide. Okay. This is just me thinking about. I don't want it all to be just a flat grey. I'm going to put more colour in, but I want to think about where I'm putting that colour in. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of Prussian blue. And a bit of dark purple. I think it's much more interesting to add and create your own grey. using other colours. This is actually quite dark in here. This is the inner mouth. So let me go in with the black. Not all over, but this is, for me, the darkest area. All right. There's some colour there, there's bits of pink I can see. So white doesn't necessarily need to be white. So many light colours that you can suggest for the white it comes down. Here. Actually, there's a bit of colour that comes up here. Let me use this pink. Okay. Might use this as There, a bit of this. What colour is this? B E Brown Earth Seven. So the higher the number, I this is a seven, the more white it has in it, which makes it a tint. The lower the number means it's got black in it, so that's how pastels are made. They have a pure colour. It's usually a middle in number. Um, on this, I'm not sure how this works, but you'll have a range like picking up a colour, blue, grey, blue, green, BG, or blue, violet. Let's start with blue, violet. So blue, violet will have a number of colours in that range. And it's created by having a pure colour and then adding either white or black. And that changes the colour. So you get shades if you add black and tones if you add white. And that's how pastels are made. That is adding white or black. From the pure colour, which can be made from a couple of pigments, but one colour, blacks, whites, and that's how you get that whole range of pastels. 
fast på oss. Um, it's a dark a bit of pink. There's that shape there. And it can look at the scruffy stage. Just putting colour on. I'm turning the past around to catch an edge. So this colour is a little bit harder than the others. And each pastel will feel a little different. You can feel some are slightly harder, even though this is a really soft range. This one is just that little bit harder. Now with pastels, because you can mix, but you it's a lot more difficult to mix colours, is why you have such a vast range of colours. I think I need a little bit of blue. Look at all those beautiful colours. Now I can softly blend. By just gently adding colour. Got all those beautiful colours. In what looks like quite a white beak, you actually can get some beautiful colours. I love colour, so I will probably add a little bit more colour than it's possibly there, but white is just so very flat when actually it's not a flat colour, it's full of so many different shades. White for me is going to be my very last resort. I need a bit of pink down here. Right, where's this light? This is actually grey 27, so this is the initial colour with lots of white in it, which is why it's such a light colour, but it's not as harsh as the white. Like I say, I'm leaving that till the very last. See specks of pink as well. Right, let's add around. So this is a, the skin. And it has a few feathers, but it's actually quite wrinkled just here in order to allow the bird to open its mouth. And Scarlet McCall um, eats anything from fruits, nuts. Um, the national bird of Honduras. Well, this is the difficult bit because I'm not I'm determined not to use um, a pastel pencil. Let's try. So you can see these still have a sharp edge. If I can just get that shape on. Okay. 
light so actually the light goes up and above where I've been a bit over keen here don't matter I'll fix that so always constantly altering and adjusting your drawing so I did initially quickly sketch it out but it doesn't mean that there aren't areas which I can move and adapt and alter Coming along, right, let's put this detail. So these are just tiny feathers, which they have on their face. But, in, but the rest of it is white skin. Put the grey, the very lightest grey on first, which means I can then just dab. The, I should reshape that, because it needs a bit more shaping. Build that up a little bit. Some. It goes right across. Okay, another one that comes down here. Just a few wiggles. It's a bit more broken that line. Maybe it's a little bit too strong, but I can go back into it. I want some of this purpley grey around the face here. They're a nice... Just need to lighten, which is that, and bring this skin back in so I'd lost that but it goes over here because see how you can create light over darks I'm going to just highlight these details and wrinkles in the skin still not use that white yet it really is one of the Nice things. And the eye in this case is actually quite light because of the camera, but they have a light orangey blue eye. You can see how I can alter, go back in, reshape when necessary. See if I can bring that. Right. I think I can try and use some white. Just, you can see now why I didn't use this first. It is quite strong. across create that curve but not cover beautiful colors underneath so this, this is white here look how bright that is and again this is why I didn't use it edge. 
make sure the beak is attached to the face and let's just add some of this white in here take that round into the mouth and catch these edges push quite hard and that'll give me some really nice touches of light back in with the shape actually I might do a bit purple I st again, I haven't used the black. Oops. So that's because I dropped the pastel on, but using my kneadable eraser, I can go back in. and textures right around the face is a lot lighter so it in pick up yeah that's better so you can see how the white has suddenly made that stand out a little bit and I can go in with a little bit of Cleaning up detail, so I want to add this that goes round here. Over here. Got a sharp ridge there. I don't like calling them wrinkles, I think it's a little unfair, but some of the lines. Right, I do have a black. There you go. Right. Let's see if I can get that light halo around the eye. Again, you can see why I haven't gone in with the black because it is quite harsh. Just going to use it to push areas back gently. Put that on here. A little bit here. Right. And final look. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of 
light. And work and finalise this area. Take the dark in a little bit. This paper will be better. Ah, that's better. Don't want to put too much on, but it does need to push the colours. under here. pick up some light might be a bit too bright under here but again it's a bit too bright let's take you back And very light. Think. These are the nice little touches where you can make or break, to be honest. But with pastel, it's so forgiving. Catch the just tap of white. This isn't strong enough for me yet, so... It was a bit too flat. Mm, I know what I could add. I could... I'm so very close to finishing, so I'm just going to add a bit of... More colour in here. And a bit of grey. That's a bit too strong, so let's go back in with a lighter colour. That's better. Quite like the blue actually I've got. Right, final little bit of darks and I'm done.
blue, and the green, which is part of this red. Right, I think I can leave it. I've got the main details in, got the eye, beak, face. Just hiring the head because I don't think it's quite high enough. It's better. So literally just a few millimetres makes all the difference. I think I'm finished there, but I hope you can see how wonderful these unison pastels are, especially on this velour paper, how they grip how they create really strong, intense colour straight away. And I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another live demonstration next week.